book that's on one of the first pages of the manual of the Moog Mother 32 is this one by Bob Moog. And I think it rings true. The Mother 32 is a pretty deep resource, but there are some hidden gems in dimly lit nooks and crannies, and that's what we'll look for in this clip. This clip will be split into two parts. First is the basic of synthesis with the Mother 32, and then the second part, the more advanced stuff and the hidden gems. Uh, there's an index on the left, so you can follow that and skip around if you want. I also have a couple more clips digging into different aspects of the Mother 32 coming up, so if you want to hear more, click like and subscribe and turn on that little notification bell, and you'll be notified by YouTube, hopefully, when those clips come out. Let's start from the top. The Moog Mother 32 is a semi-modular analog synthesizer. Let's break that down. First thing, it's a Moog, which is something you hear the minute you turn it on and hopefully you, uh, you heard in the part I just played for you. It just sounds great. And semi-modular means that besides being a standalone synth, parts of it are also patchable as independent modules. The Mother 32 is pre-wired out of the box, so you don't need to use patch cables or any other modular components to make it work if you don't want to. But many of its components, like the oscillator, filter, and LFO, can also be rewired differently internally or interconnected with other gear. I'll start with a basic overview. The oscillator has a frequency knob that goes up and down one octave. You can choose saw or pulse. And for pulse, you can choose the pulse width. The oscillator mix knob lets you choose between the oscillator and a noise oscillator, or as we'll see later on, an external source through the patch bay. The oscillator lets you glide between notes if you want. The keyboard spans eight octaves. In terms of basic oscillator modulation, this section lets you control mod source, mod amount, and mod destination. So for example, the LFO, that's our mod turner, will turn the pulse width knob for us or the frequency knob based on the amount in this knob and the rate in this knob. So I just created a little vibrato effect by applying the LFO as a modulation source to frequency. You can also use the envelope generator by flicking this switch as a modulation source. So the envelope typically controls the volume of the attack, the start of a note, uh, and the end of a note, but you can also use it if you turn the modulation knob to affect pitch, for example, not just volume. So envelopes are made for one-time modulations and LFOs are made for repetitive modulations. Let's move on to the filter section. The Mother 32 has two filters, a low-pass filter, here we're moving the cutoff point below which low frequencies pass, and it has resonance, which places an emphasis at the cutoff point. So here we have a sawtooth wave with harmonics, and the resonance lets you emphasize each and every one of the harmonics pass through them. And that's the beauty of subtractive synthesis. I'll bring in the noise oscillator so you can have a better view visually of what the, uh, the filters do. Low pass filter cutting out the high frequencies, and high pass filter cutting out the low frequencies. Resonance, adding an emphasis at the cutoff point. This doesn't work as well for the high pass filter. The manual uh, gives a workaround for that if you want to have resonance on the high pass filter, but for the low pass filter, it works as instructed. You can literally see the emphasis of the resonance adding gain across the spectrum at the cutoff point. The filter's resonance also self-oscillates beyond a certain level. I'll plug in a cable into the external audio and what that will do is shut the noise off from the oscillator mixer. So this is the sawtooth wave and then just the oscillator. And you can see as we change the cutoff point, we're hearing a sine wave at the cutoff point, which is the resonance self-oscillating. And we'll have uh, more fun with that because that's basically one of our hidden gems, another oscillator hidden inside the Mother 32. I'll continue with the filter section overview. The filter section, like the oscillator section, also has modulation capabilities 
pre-wired into the Mother32. So here you can choose the source. I'll take the LFO as a modulation source, increase the modulation amount, and set the place where the modulation starts. And you can see the LFO moving the cutoff point back and forth, faster or slower. We're basically controlling the cutoff point automatically back and forth. And the VCO mod amount tells the cutoff point how far to go. We can choose a different mod source, the envelope generator, not the LFO. Just like the frequency, the oscillator frequency, um, this is for one-shot movement. So the attack is the initial motion. You can see the cutoff point going up. Decay is the motion back. I'll turn off sustain. That way the motion down will follow the motion up immediately. Now if I want the filter cutoff point to move in the opposite direction, I'll change polarity to minus and increase the cutoff point so that the direction down can be felt. You can see as I press a key, filter cutoff point goes down and then up. And if I inverse polarity back to plus, it'll go up first and then down. Let's move on to the envelope generator. This section lets you control how notes start. Attack is the time it takes a note to reach its maximum level, and decay is the time it takes it to go back down to zero. Turning sustain off means decay starts immediately as the attack ends, rather than waiting for you to leave the note. Now remember, the envelope generator affects volume or amplitude, the VCA by default, but you can also patch it in and control other parameters using the patch bay. Let's continue our whirlwind basic tour. The keyboard lets you play multiple octaves. And the sequencer, let me reset that, lets you create sequences very easily. One of the ways is just to record the notes one after another. You can record up to 32 notes per sequence. You can control the tempo using this knob. Once the sequence is going, you can edit, of course, any of the parameters of the sound at any time. You can transpose the sequence. You saw me do that in the uh, song in the beginning of the clip, where I transpose the bass line. So that's a basic overview of the sequencer, and there are a few gems in there. We'll get to them later. Okay, let's zoom in and talk about the patch bay. The patch bay has 32 patch points, which either have information coming out, in which case it's reverse text um, written um, on a white background, or you can feed information in and control the various parameters of the Mother32. Generally speaking, but not always, information going out is on the right. So that's the reverse text. The patches are organized more or less like the knob layout on the Mother32, starting from the top right, the VCA, going down all the way to the keyboard controls on the bottom. These are all the out points. The in points generally on the left, uh, again organized like the Mother knobs. So for example, uh, these five knobs are controlled by these five inputs, by voltage from these five inputs, which can come either from outputs on the Mother32 or from other modular synthesizers. So that's pretty much it for the basic tour of the Mother32, and now let's start looking at the hidden gems. So this switch lets you choose between a sawtooth and square wave oscillator. But if you hook up the pulse slash square output to the mixer, you'll see that the Mother32 is actually outputting both waves at the same time, and you can use the mix knob to select between them. Now to make things more interesting, you can hook up the LFO to the mix knob and have the waveforms morph dynamically between each other. So I'll take the LFO triangle wave output connected to the mixer mix knob input. I'll set a base level for the mix voltage. And then using the LFO knob, I can change the rate at which the Mother32 toggles between those two waveforms. And if I change the LFO to triangle, it will only move smoothly between the two waveforms at the rate that I choose with the LFO rate knob. Pulse width modulation is another nice way to get um, a multi-oscillator sound from the Mother32. 
I've got LFO as the source and pulse width as the destination. And as I increase the rate and of course the modulation amount, I'll get sort of an effect of two oscillators, especially on the low registers. Sounds like a, a nice detuned multi-oscillator synth. Another oscillator hiding in the Mother 32 is the LFO. I'll hook up the LFO triangle wave output into the mixer, set the mixer only to receive input from the LFO, and gradually as I increase the LFO rate, you can see that it becomes audible. But it's still oscillating at one rate, so it doesn't matter which key I press, it still makes the same sound. You can bump that frequency using the VC mix output, what I want to do is get additional voltage into the LFO rate, so I'll plug that into the LFO input. And now as I gradually increase voltage, I can get a higher frequency to the LFO rate control. And that's about as high a note as you'll get from the LFO. Still not keyboard tracked. We'll get to that in a bit. So what can we do with this new oscillator? Well, first thing we can use it is just a constant sound say, in the key of what we're, we're playing. So I'll tune it to C. Okay, that's good enough. And now for every tone I play, I've got the LFO in the background as a second tone, sort of like a static sub oscillator. And that certainly adds richness to the sound. Okay, so that's a static sub oscillator using the LFO. You can hook up keyboard tracking to the LFO as well. And once you do that, the Mother 32 will add the frequencies of the keys you're playing and adjust the LFO rate. Now a little uh, problem here is that the LFO input doesn't work at one volt per octave. So you sort of get micro tuning effects here. Um, and in the low registers, you can sort of, you can find the sweet spot where you get a full octave or something close to that by matching pitches of the low note and the high note. So here I've matched the low C, the high C needs some adjustment. So you can find that space in between where it works nicely. And you've got a nice LFO sub oscillator. But wait, there's more. There's an oscillator hiding in the filter. So I'll take the VCF out and connect that to the mixer. Let's hear just the filter. And then if I increase my resonance, we get a sine wave at the cutoff point. Now this isn't keyboard tracked by default, but we can fix that by connecting the keyboard output in the patch bay to the cutoff frequency input. And that goes ahead and mixes the voltage we get from the keyboard with the voltage we get from the cutoff knob. So it's very easy to tune that way. So now we have a fully controllable self-oscillating filter. We can go ahead and bring back our main oscillator and we can tune them to each other so that they play together. You can detune them relative to one another. You can have them play in different octaves. Might need to adjust tuning if you don't want it to be detuned. Now you might say, and if you don't, then I will, that it's nice, but because I'm using a filter, I'm cutting out all the sawtooth wave harmonics. And the way to fix this is there's a second mixer in the Mother 32. The one here in the middle doesn't go through the filter. So I can take my sawtooth out, connect to it to the mixer as well. So now I've got the filter and sawtooth going into this mixer, but I'm not hearing the output yet because I didn't connect the sound you're hearing now to the mixer out. See, what I'm recording now is the output of the Mother 32 coming from the back, 
not the output coming out from this middle row mixer um, in the patch bay. So to fix that, I'll take this cable here, plug it into the mixer out, and then go ahead and plug it into my computer input, which is also generating the oscilloscope. And okay, so my levels are messed up. Using the volume knob won't help because we're not going through that path anymore. What we need to do is use the mixer, the bottom mixer, VC mix, and we can con that's one way of controlling levels. I can also adjust levels on my sound card to get it right. And having done all that, we now have a clean sawtooth wave, unfiltered, playing along with a filtered resonance cutoff point. And it no longer matters what we do with the mixer on top because that's disconnected from our signal flow. We're playing the raw sawtooth and the raw filter uh, the VCA has no impact. Now that we have these two oscillators, we can tune each of them separately to where we want. So now I'll make the, uh, the filter a sub-oscillator. And normally a filter would be cutting out all these high frequencies, but we're hearing them just fine. We can still use the VC mix knob to change the relative volume of these two oscillators. And the sequencer works just fine too. You can also generate FM synth style sounds. Do that by connecting the LFO as a modulation source for the frequency of the oscillator. These quick changes in frequency have a metallic character which can later be used with an envelope generator uh, to create bells or metal snares and other interesting sounds. You can also connect the filter to a fast, to fast modulation source with the LFO. And I can also make, a, I don't know, this is sort of like a trumpet sound. Get very interesting sound design uh, possibilities with fast modulation. Moving on, LFO to VCA gets a nice tremolo effect. We'll do that in the patch bay. And I'm going to use the VC mix row so that I can control the level of tremolo, not just the rate. So LFO will determine the frequency, but it won't have any impact until I raise the VC mix. I can increase the attack to have a more string-like sound. And now I have control on how fast or how deep my tremolo goes. few serious gems hidden inside the Mother32 sequencer. I'll build on top of the sequence I created in the basic tour before. So what's special about this sequence is that it lets you add parameters on a per step basis. Let's start with step one, and I'll add an accent. The second per step element you can change is note length, or gate time. It's any number between one and eight. You can see it here with the LEDs lighting up, and eight means a tie to the next note, which I can add glide to. The way to do that is select note number two and turn the glide knob clockwise to the right. Now we're not hearing the glide yet because we haven't turned on the global glide parameter. So to do that, I'll have to um, ignore this for a second. I'll have to exit the uh, step edit mode and then turn the glide knob. And now you can hear the glide between step one and step two. The next super powerful sequencing feature is ratcheting. So I'll add it to step five, shift five, we'll get into that mode. And then shift and glide knob will add between two to four repetitions on that same note. To hear it better, 
I'll add an accent on step five, a shift accent. And finally, to complete the TB303 slash acid jazz feel, I'll add some resonance and play with the filter. One thing I didn't want to leave out of sequencing, uh, beside of course tempo, is that you have with a shift tempo knob swing control, either plus or minus. To get that uh, even more acid jazzy feel. Sequencing. The last thing I want to talk about is the assign output. That output on the patch bay can actually be configured to one of 16 things. Now that has so much depth to it, I want to address it in a separate clip. So hit like and subscribe um, if you want to check that out. But I'll just look at one thing, which is using the assign output as a random voltage generator. Now you can hook that up to a bunch of things. I guess the most obvious one is velocity. Now let's start playing with this. These velocity changes are too extreme for me. So what I'll do is I'll use the mixer as an attenuator to moderate the voltage changes. This way I can gradually introduce an ever increasing span of voltages, random voltages, to create random notes, but in a more limited scope of octaves. Now we can apply random voltage to other things too, like the filter cutoff point makes a really nice effect. So what if we wanted to apply a random variable to something else? Let's say the, uh, the mix between the oscillator and the noise oscillator. That's pretty simple. Just take the plug out, put it into the mix knob control, and now the degree of the mix is modulated randomly using every new note in the sequence as a trigger for a random number change. If we wanted the random voltage to affect more than one destination, we could use the multi output to do that. So I've plugged the assign out to the input of the multi splitter, and then I'll send one to the filter cutoff point and another output to the mix between the two oscillators. So this brings us to the end of this sound design tutorial. I've got a couple more planned, so hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.